In Karnataka, the governor's office has shifted from a ceremonial role to a key political arena where both the BJP and the Congress vie for influence. Political parties are filing complaints regarding corruption and making demands for prosecution using the office to gain leverage in the state's turbulent political scene. But why has the governor's office, which was meant to be neutral and constitutional, become the centre of political drama between the BJP and the Congress? The BJP has been proactive, reportedly using the governor's office to put pressure on the Congress regime. Recently, complaints against Chief Minister Siddharamaya over the Muda scam and Minister Priyank Karge regarding land allotment scandals were swiftly filed with Karnataka Governor Tawar Chand Gelot. In retaliation, the Congress leaders claim that the governor's swift actions in these matters reveal a political bias while accusing him of being a puppet of the BJP. Whenever a political blame game starts, the governor immediately steps in. Definitely that's a positive move. Some checks and balances are required. But the problem here is the issue never ends there. Instead, all these blame games, mudsledging starts. There is no positive result. Instead, they will grab some media attention. Eventually, everybody will forget the issue. Issue hardly remains and people will forget it. That's it. The governor acted on these complaints and sought clarifications and explanations from the Congress government. The Congress claims that this is part of the BJP's plan to use the governor's powers to put pressure on them. However, the Congress has not remained silent either. They have countered these allegations with their own responses, accusing the BJP of launching a political witch hunt. To defend its leaders, the Congress submitted counter-reports to the governor claiming the accusations were politically motivated. The conflict peaked on August 31st when the Congress leaders marched to Raj Bhavan in protest. Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivakumar led a delegation of Congress ministers, legislators and party members to submit a petition to the governor. They demanded approval for prosecution against key BJP and JDS leaders, including Union Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy and former BJP ministers Janardhan Reddy, Sashi Kala Jole and Murugesh Nirani. In connection with various cases, including illegal mining scams during their tenure. The evidence is that the governor has acted in a hurry to give sanction uh, in the case of the chief minister. Whereas he has been sitting on four other cases, which are clear cases of corruption investigated, investigated by the Karnataka Lokayukta, which is a statutory body. And they have investigated and they are seeking permission clearly under the provisions of the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, sanction for prosecution. And the government has been sitting quite on that, whereas in an undue hurry, he has given permission in the case of the chief minister in whose case, in, in, in which case, uh, there has not been any investigation. And the case seems to be, the charges seem to be very weak. So we have evidence to say that Karnataka governor has acted in a partisan manner. And whether he was right in uh, deciding the case or in giving permission to investigate the charges against the chief minister, let the courts decide. Congress leaders allege that Governor Gaylord's quick actions show political favoritism and accused him of acting under the influence of the BJP. The ruling party leaders believe that the Raj Bhavan has become an extension of the BJP's political strategies. They point to the governor's quick responses to BJP complaints and the delay in addressing Congress concerns as evidence. This is how the governor's office in Karnataka has become a political power centre, a place where both parties engage in political warfare. Both the BJP and the Congress are leveraging the governor's position to advance their respective agendas, turning what was meant to be an impartial office into a pivotal element in their political manoeuvring. As allegations and counter-allegations fly thick and fast, 
the officer's credibility and neutrality are increasingly called into question. The shifting perception of the governor's role highlights the deepening political divide in Karnataka and underscores the complex interplay between governance and political strategy in the region.